HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Phipps Insurance Agency, representing companies such as MapFree Insurance. Their family-owned independent agency is deeply rooted in the communities they serve and offer time-tested insurance products to fit individual needs. Since 1950, Phipps Insurance specializes in home, auto, business, condo, and renter's insurance. Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's edition of HCAM News. I'm HCAM News Director Tom Nappy, here to fill you in with what's happening in Hopkinton. On today's edition of HCAM News, the latest Hiller Sports Report, including our conversation with softball head coach Shannon Alberry, the Friends of the Hopkinton Public Library hosted their first coffee house, plus much more. But first, next Monday, it's marathon time and the festivities to celebrate the 100th Boston Marathon start in Hopkinton have started. Here's a look at the opening ceremony. In 1924, the Boston Marathon course was lengthened to 26 miles, 385 yards, to conform to what had become the accepted distance for a marathon, and the starting line was moved west to Hopkinton. The 26.2 Foundation and the Hopkinton Center for the Arts are excited to celebrate this momentous year in Hopkinton. Along with several other community organizations including the Marathon Committee, Hopkinton Parks and Rec, the Hopkinton Library, and the Hopkinton Historical Society. Thank you for celebrating Hopkinton's 100th start of the Boston Marathon, presented by Bank of America. We love our small town, that once a year shines in a global spotlight. Nothing against the big town Still hate seeding off to say the crews in the big town When my bed is in a small town Oh, that's good enough for me Well, I was born in a small town And I can breathe in a small town Gonna die in a small town well, that's probably where to bury me Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm asked all the time, uh, you know, what does Hopkinton really think about, uh, about the Boston Marathon and isn't it a disturbance and doesn't it disrupt things? Let me give you an example of what I saw earlier today. Faith Community Church is about, yeah, about a mile down the street from the starting line. There were... 40, 50 volunteers in the room stuffing 30,000 runner packets. That story never gets told very far and wide, but one of the intriguing parts of the package are safety pins. I mean, this goes back a long way. I thought by now they'd find a new way to put bibs on people's, <laughs> on, on people's singlets. These are, these are four pins put together by the senior uh, and the seniors in Hopkinton at the senior center. So I don't want to hear anybody ever again talk to me about how deep the roots are between Hopkinton and the and the Boston Athletic Association. So I'm honored to to be here. I'm honored that Dell is a part of this community, has been a part of this community, and continues to be a part of this community. So, look, um, thank you, Tim, for having me here. Uh, thank you for, you know, Hopkinton being the perfect distance to be able to run a marathon, <laughs> right? Hey, look, you know, sometimes you get lucky, right? But honestly, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to work where I work. It's a pleasure to be part of this town, be part of this community, and, you know, working with the Chamber of Commerce and all the things that we do together. And, uh, you know, look, I, I do a lot, as Tim said. Um, you know, my, my day job is, uh, I run global technical support, but uh, my side hustle is community. We're Ashland and Hopkins together, a uh, strong partnership. We share the marathon. Uh, you have it now. Maybe the next hundred years we'll get it back. I don't know. But um, 
but uh, certainly appreciate that and, and looking forward to working with you. I do have something for you. Hold on. Which? Uh, oh, here it is. Yes. So Ashland is known as the, is the home of the electric clock. So this is, and of course, timing is very important to the marathon. So pleased to give this to you and congratulations. My name is Paul DeBonner. I've been a resident here since 1978 and a member, as Tim said, of the first marathon committee. As Tim mentioned, after the race in 78, the Commonwealth believed the town needed to do some real uh, improvements to make the marathon happen here in Hopkinton. So our committee was formed in 79 and included a total of 17 members, many who have since passed, but names like Chief Bowker, John Palmer, Harold Rathburn, Arthur Stewart, Dr. Bobeck, Tim Kilduff, who was our chair, Bill Thomas, Cookie Cumlin, Rosemary Lynch, and the BAA liaison, Tom Brown. As a, on behalf of the Alpha Omega Council and all the Greek Americans, uh, we thank Hopkinton for being there for all of our runners, for propelling them to, to their victory. And uh, we'd like to present a photograph, a framed photograph, of the spirit of the marathon to Muriel and to the people of Hopkinton. Uh, this is from 2021. I run all the time around, I live in Hopkinton, as everyone knows. And the town's been under construction for many <laughs> years. And during that time, they were ripping up the um, start line and actually there was a big um, shovel and crane that was way down the street so i was running by and i just said to this guy um can i have a piece of that because that's never going to happen again so marathon represents exactly the effort that um, all of us have to make in order to surpass our own limits and believe me, there is nothing more Greek than trying to become better than what you actually are. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Massachusetts General Court hereby congratulates the residents of the town of Hopkinton on the 100th anniversary of the Boston Marathon start line in the town of Hopkinton, and be it further resolved that a copy of these resolutions be transmitted forthwith by the clerk of the Senate to the town clerk of Hopkinton, and it's signed by me, Karen Spelka, as Hopkinton Senator and as Senate President, and signed by uh, Representative James Arena De Rosa for you. And the staff, led by Jack Fleming, and the staff here, I want every member of the staff from the BA to stand up. It's tough enough to do the job, but when you get... So I want to let you all know that we hear you, we support you, thank you for everything you do, and sometimes it may seem like it's not going to end. The waves just keep coming and coming. But I want you to stay strong because you got a lot of supporters, as you can see here tonight. Keep doing the job that you're doing and keep doing it well. You get and represent the starter, the start to finish line. That's what will be painted on the start line. And um, thank you, Jack. So, Jack, thank you. Thank, for thanks, the Jack, for doing that. This has been in a box, and I'm not kidding, since about 1984. And I think it needs to be in your, in your case. Hopkinton Public Library Foundation hosted their first coffee house on Saturday, April 6th. The event featured the music and dancing of Flamenco Boston. Here's a look at the captivating and memorable performance.
my name is Antonio and I play guitar, the micro guitar. And my name is Anna and I sing. And my name is Joshi, I'm a flamenco dancer. And uh, how long have you all uh, been performing together? Uh, losing count now, probably, I don't know, 10 years? At least 10, 10 years. years, yes, yeah. at least yeah. 10 years. At least 10 years, we'll say that. <laughs> This was our first time performing here, um, and uh, a lot of people came out, so it was, it was nice to feel that energy. Um, so yeah, it was just a, a lot of fun, and the place is beautiful. The acoustics were, were great, which is always, uh, you know, always appreciated. And um, the energy was good to feed off of and, and you know, uh, to work off of. Terrific. And do you, uh, you play uh, all around the country, statewide mostly? Uh, where do you play mostly? Uh, mostly in New England, mostly in the Boston area. <laughs> Uh, we have a regular gig at Tres Gatos in Jamaica Plain, uh, first Wednesday of every month. Uh, but otherwise, we're kind of all over the, all over the place. Unless you want to hire us yeah. somewhere far, we'll come. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll travel for, for Flamenco. How long have you been uh, dancing for? Uh, let's see, I have been dancing Flamenco like 25 years, so studying in Spain. My journey started studying in Spain, and now I'm here in Boston, and I'm dancing flamenco. Where can people find you? Uh, flamencoboston.com or flamencoboston on Instagram and Facebook, and that's flamenco with the C, not a G. Not, uh, it's not flamingo Boston. It's uh, flamenco Boston. For more information about the talented performers, you can check them out online at flamencoboston.com and be sure to be on the lookout for more Hopkinton Public Library Foundation coffee houses coming up in the near future. The Hopkinton Hillers spring sports season has started. Here's a look at what happened during the first week of the season and also our conversation with Hiller softball head coach, Shannon Alberry. On Monday, April 1st, Hopkinton Hillers girls lacrosse hosted their home opener versus Holliston. Hopkinton looked to get into the win column after starting off the season with a road loss versus Norwood. It was a 6-6 game heading into the fourth quarter. Bella Tomeno and myself were on the call. Actually fall, so Hopkinton's gonna have to be able to defend that. Movier closing in, takes it, makes it. And essentially exactly what Holliston did on the other end, but this time it ends up resulting in a goal. Rachel Bouvier does her own little impression. 
of uh, the last possession of Holliston, weaving inside and gets it past the, the gets it past Langdon to maybe be the dagger with the clock ticking to almost under four minutes. Two goals in four minutes. The free shot here, and Bouvier puts it in. And that's what Holliston's going to be chasing now, down 8-6 with four minutes to go. I mean, it, it has to happen. You gotta get as many shots as possible now down the stretch, but just can't fall. Oh, look at that, there you go. And that one does fall, right? Anderson um, Hastings makes it 8-7 to seven with it. Over to Bouvier. Bouvier has it knocked out. It's going to stay with the Hillers. You know, if you're Hopkinton, you want it in the stick of Bouvier, and she's been huge for them today. Over to Mosier. Five seconds left. Mosier going to take it around. She has a lot of speed. Drops it, but that'll do it. Uh, Hillers hang on. They get the victory eight to seven and improve to one and one on the season. Hillers get the late goal and take the eight to seven win. The following Wednesday, the Hillers fell short on the road in Bishop Fian and currently stand at one and two heading into week two of the spring season. On Tuesday, April 2nd, Hiller baseball and softball were at home Baseball lost to Norwood 2 to nothing. Softball took the win 8 to 3. Unfortunately, HCAM was not at the game due to weather. Following a bad weather-riddled first week of the season, Hiller baseball is 0 and 1. Hiller softball stands at 1 and 0. We recently caught up with head coach Shannon Alberry and talked about the softball season so far. Hello everybody, Tom Nappy here, and we are joined by head coach of Hopkinton Hillers Varsity Softball, Shannon Alberry. Shannon, how are you? I'm all right, thanks. How are you? Excellent. All right. Well, spring season has started uh, a bit of a slow start due to the uh, crazy weather we've had, the sudden change back to winter. Uh, but it looks like finally we're going to get some spring weather and we can really get things going. But uh, how's everything going so far and uh, how's the team looking? Uh, so far, we're we're uh, making the best of the uh, the weather that we have and um, team's looking good. It's the first time in three years, I think, that we've actually had a, um, a returning um, upper class squad. So uh, so a number of, of girls that have been on the team for a while now. So. Uh, so we should be competitive this season. Absolutely. And uh, you got some great returning talent, such as uh, Holly Paharik, who recently just had a nice uh, little article in the uh, Metro West Daily News as she made the, what was it, top 30 players to watch, I believe? Yes. Yeah, that's the one. <laughs> and uh, she put up uh, incredible numbers last year and, I'm sure we'll do the same this year. Uh, tell us about your captains, Caroline Kane, Holly Paharik. I mean, it must be great yeah. to have that experienced leadership. Yeah, so we actually we have three captains. Um, so Caroline Kane was um, also one of the the basketball leaders this year too. So um, so Caroline is she's a, a calming presence for us. She's she leads by example. She uh, she always works hard to get better. Makes every every rep count and so she's an extraordinary leader for um for our, our younger players that we have and, and everybody looks up to her including myself um holly is just a, an all-around uh great athlete i've i've said many times that uh, if my own kids grow up if my own daughters grow up to be like like holly then then i've done something right so if they could be half of the kid that holly is in terms of her work ethic uh her commitment um her attitude uh, that's just she's she's a phenomenal human being and a phenomenal athlete. Um, and our third captain this year is Ashley Callery, uh, who also leads by example. She's someone that's really trustworthy and responsible and uh, and looks out for uh, for everybody else on the team. and and all three of them uh, working together, they just they bring something really special to uh, to our field and and to our team. 
And there's a lot of uh, new faces I see on the mm -hmm. roster uh, this season. Uh, could you fill us in on any of the newcomers to the team? Sure. So, um, so we were lucky to uh, to snipe from from the baseball program, uh, Caroline Osman, uh, who's making the transition to softball this year. So she'll be a, a first baseman and catcher for us. She's working on her baseball swing a little bit. It's a little different. Um, so she'll be new with us this year. She should see a lot of field time. Uh, we've also got um, a ninth grade pitcher, uh, Addie Walls. So. She throws pretty hard, so we're we're working on her with um, with control and confidence, and so she should be able to see quite a few innings this year too. So, uh, so those are like our our two big names that that we've added um, for the program this year that we think they'll they'll be really good additions for us. That's terrific. Uh, and you had one game so far against Norwood, a nice win. Uh, can you talk about how that game went? Yeah. So, uh, so really like. Um, really even start for us. Uh, I think it was, uh, it was zero zero after the first inning and, uh, and it was a one, one game for a while. And then we were able to break it open with our offense. We just uh, kind of figured out their pitcher and was able to wait back and drive in some long runs. Um, for that game, Charlotte Holden played a really big role for us there and she went three for four with, with a triple. So, uh, she got a number of RBIs in that game too. So, um, so our offense was, was really able to, um, to get some runs in. And so I was really proud of them for that. That's excellent. It looks like uh, you had some good pitching uh, that day too, against that tough Norwood lineup. Yeah. Yeah. Norwood, they can, they're, they're always a good competitor. So yeah. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of good competitors, you got some good competitors coming up this week. You got <laughs> Ashland, uh, Westwood and Framingham. Uh, can you talk about any of the uh, opponents that you got coming up this week? Well, today's going to be weird with the eclipse. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's going to be something. So, um, but we all, we always love playing against Ashland. They always have really great attitudes and um, I think they've got a really young squad this year. So, uh, so we'll look forward to playing against them tomorrow should be, should be tough. We're going up against one of the league's best pitchers tomorrow in, in Bridget Mulkeen. Um, so hopefully we'll be able to jump on, uh, jump on early and score some runs and um, and play our, our our the defense that we've been practicing. So that should be pretty good. Uh, and Framingham, they've got a new head coach this year, so um, so they're under under different leadership. But they are they didn't graduate much. Um, they graduated some good talent, but they have a lot of talent coming back. So uh, I think some of their pitching too. So that should be really that should be a really competitive game too there on Friday. Absolutely. Uh... Should be a, a fun season to follow for sure. Very excited to uh, get out there, cover some Hiller softball. It's looking like a great team this season. And uh, I have to ask, who do you got in the big game, Purdue or UConn? <laughs> uh, I'm going to UConn. I'm sticking local here. <laughs> all right, Coach. That's <laughs> I, I'm go. I'm UConn all the way as that's well. Right. So that's right. Hopefully, the local team could take it home once again. Yeah. <laughs> but all right, coach. Well, we're looking for the women. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Who are you going That's for in that right. game? That game, I was going for UConn, uh, UConn yeah. against Iowa. But once Iowa took it, I knew South Carolina would win it all the way. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, I was going for yeah. UConn, and then once they lost, I, I was yeah. leaning towards Iowa. Uh, yeah. yeah. Caitlin Clark's story is just unbelievable. What a oh, tremendous yeah. athlete. Yes. But, Coach, uh, we're looking forward to the season, looking forward to uh, seeing you at the games, and uh, we'll uh, catch up uh, another time during the season, and we'll talk to you again soon. All right. Thanks so much, Tom. Also in week one, Hiller Boys Lacrosse won a close game in Holliston by a final of 10-5. to The Hiller Boys followed up with a 7-6 to road win versus Ashland and stand at 2-0 and oh, heading into week two of the spring season. Boys Outdoor Track and Field picked up a win on Friday, April 5th. They defeated Medfield 86-50. The Girls Outdoor Track and Field team also picked up a win over Medfield 96-39. Josie Hopkins, Lauren Canty, and Emma Prisco won multiple events as Hiller boys and girls track and field teams 
both start the season in the win column. It's time to tell you about some happenings in town you should know about. On Tuesday, April 23rd at 7 p.m., you can catch the 36th annual Hopkinton Women's Club Meet the Candidates Night and get to learn about and know some of the candidates in this year's Hopkinton Town election. You can also watch live on HCAM TV. That's April 23rd at 7 p.m. On Thursday, April 11th, there will be an informational Zoom webinar, the specialized building code for Hopkinton. There is a town meeting article regarding the building code for Hopkinton, and you can learn all about it on Thursday, April 11th, 6 p.m. via a Zoom webinar. You can find the details at our website, hcam.tv. Our picture of the week, the Hopkinton Boys Lacrosse team working on yoga and mobility over at the Hopkinton Middle School. And they have certainly started off the season very well as they currently stand at three wins and no losses. And also another bonus photo of the week for you. The friends of the Hopkinton Public Library hosted their first coffee house and Flamenco Boston put on a tremendous show. Be sure to check out the segment at hcan.tv. Upcoming town government meetings include on Thursday, April 16th at 6 p.m. The select board will have a meeting that you can catch live on HCAM TV. And also, don't forget, Tuesday, April 23rd, the Hopkinton Women's Club present Meet the Candidates Night. For more information about upcoming town government meetings, head over to hcam.tv slash gov or the town website at hopkintonma.gov. Believe it or not, we are out of time for this edition of HCAM News, but don't worry, next Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we will be back. For everyone at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. As always, we thank you for watching. Take care, enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody.